Hey, third graders, let's get started reading chapter 13 today. So the last time we read in chapter 12, that was finally home and he was on his way home with mom. Mom just told him that the skunk kit, she built a little enclosure for it. So she had been working on like a cage so it could sleep in it um, and stay safe at night. So we're going to read this chapter, two chapters today, chapter 13 and 14 together. And I hope you enjoy what we read. So let's get started. Chapter 13, what's in a name? The enclosure was nothing like Baby Cake's enclosure. It was just a dog kennel, a smallish one. Blue plastic with a handle on the top and a black grate door that locked. But inside, Mom had made a nice nest out of old ripped up t-shirts. Did you use any of mine? Bat asked. I did, Mom said. I hope that's okay. It's better than okay, Bat answered. If the t-shirts still have my scent, then maybe the kit will bond with me. I don't think we could get your scent out of your t-shirts if we tried, Bat, said Janie. That's teasing, said Bat. But he was peering into the enclosure and didn't feel very upset. Did you use any of mine, Mom? Janie asked. No, Mom said. Don't worry. I don't see him, Bat said. I don't see him anywhere. He's definitely in there, Bat, Mom said. The door was latched and everything, and he's too, still too little to walk anyway. His eyes aren't even open yet. Bat unlatched the door and stuck his hand inside. Yes, there was the kit, tiny and warm, wrapped in a fold of fabric. He's safe, Bat said. Okay, Bat, Mom said, latch up the cage and go wash your hands. Let's have a snack. At the table, Janie was smearing peanut butter on crackers. She'd gotten out a second butter knife for Bat. Bat loved peanut butter, but he could never pack peanut butter sandwiches for school lunches because Lynn was allergic to peanuts. The entire saw-wet school was a nut-free zone. Janie passed a roll of crackers to Bat. Mom had heated water in the kettle and poured out three cups of tea. Tea and crackers and peanut butter? Wonderful. I wonder if Stripey will like peanut butter, he said, trying to be casual about the name. You know, when he's all grown up. Stripey, said Janie. Is that what you're calling the skunk? It's a good name, Bat said. It's a really good name. Skunks have stripes. I'm not sure it's a good idea to be naming the skunk, Mom said. She looked concerned with the little wavy wrinkles across her squished up forehead. If you name him, it will be too easy to get attached. And remember, he's only staying with us for a few more weeks. Besides, said Janie, who says you get to name him? I'll bet I could come up with a way better name than Stripey. No, you couldn't, Bat said, stabbing the knife into the peanut butter jar. Stripey is the best name for a skunk. You always want to give things dumb, obvious names, Janie said. Bat felt sharp, hot tears in his eyes. Do not, he whispered. When you were four, you named your teddy bear Barry. And last year, when that stray cat kept coming into our yard, you named her Patches. She was a calico, Bat said. Calicos look like they are covered in patches. Janie, said Mom, be nice. Aw, Bat doesn't mind, do you, Bat? Asked Janie. Of course Bat minded, but he didn't want Janie to know how much she had hurt his feelings. Well, what would you name the kit, he asked. I don't know. Give me a minute to think about it. J.D. munched on crackers and Mom sipped her tea, but Bat just waited to hear what Janie would come up with. He knew it wouldn't be as good as Stripey, and he couldn't wait to tell her so. I've got it, Janie said after a minute. Mom, he was born last Thursday, right? Mm-hmm, Mom said. And we want him to be big and strong. We're learning about mythology in school. I think we should name the skunk after the biggest, strongest Nordic god. 
We should name him Thor. Thor? Asked Mom. The Thunder God, Janie said. It's perfect, see, because they used to celebrate Thor's day, and now we call that Thursday. And that's when the skunk was born. Thor, Bat whispered. Sometimes Janie was annoying. Sometimes she was me- a mean tease. But sometimes, Bat thought, she was brilliant. All right, take a moment to digest how all those characters are feeling, how mom is feeling, getting a little bit worried that the kids might be getting attached and feeling a bond between the skunk and might have a really hard time when it's time to go away now that it's big and strong. Think about how Bat is feeling, feeling a little upset maybe that his name didn't get picked, but also seems to be kind of into what Janie's idea of calling the skunk Thor. And also think about Janie, teasing her little brother, but coming up with a really pretty cool name. So pause the video if you need to, work on your questions a little bit, and we're going to move into chapter 14 called Sleeping Arrangements. I want to sleep on the couch next to Thor. No, Bat, you need to sleep in your own bed, said Mom. Then I want Thor to sleep in bed with me. You can't sleep with the skunk bat. What if you rolled over in the night and crushed him? I would never do that, Bat said. He would. He would never. Bat, honey, the skunk, Thor, interrupted Bat. His name is Thor. Mom rubbed her forehead. Fine, she said. Thor, Thor can't sleep in your bed. Thor is a wild animal. Wild animals don't sleep in beds. But in the wild, Thor wouldn't sleep alone, he argued. He would sleep in a pile with all his brothers and sisters all cuddled up. I'm glad people don't sleep like skunks, Janie said. Her hair was damp from the shower and she was wearing her favorite pajamas, the ones with all the unicorns. Each unicorn was doing something different. One rocked out with a guitar, the, another was reading a book, another wore a chef's hat and was flipping eggs in a pan. The only thing they had in common was that they were all unicorns. Janie, did you know that a herd of unicorns is called a blessing? Bat asked. Yes, Bat, of course I know that. Every time I wear these pajamas, you tell me that. I, I didn't know if you remembered, Bat said. You're not the only one who remembers things Bat, said Janie, and then she stomped off into her room. Bat turned back to Mom. Please, he begged. No, said Mom in her firm voice. But Bat knew Mom's firm voice. Sometimes, if he pushed hard enough, he could, cha- he could change it into her soft voice, the one that let him have his way. I could be the one to feed him and you could sleep all night, Bat said. I know how to do it. Who do you think took care of you when you were a baby and had to eat every two hours, Bat? Mom asked. I took care of you and Janie. I can take care of one little skunk. If you let me help, Bat said, bargaining now. I'll promise to scrape all the extra food off my plate from now on and put it in the dishwasher after dinner. Mom smiled. I thought it was too gross to look at leftover food stuck to a plate. It is too gross, Bat said, but I'll do it anyway, even if it made me gag. Even if it made him throw up. Besides, Bat said, I helped Thor go to the bathroom after he finished eating. If I can do that. I can do other gross things. Mom had taught Bat that baby skunks don't know how to go to the bathroom on their own when they are little. And if they don't pee and poop, they can die. In nature, their mother would help them learn. But since Thor was an orphan, every time he drank his formula, someone had to hold him up and rub his his bottom with a wet cotton swab until he pooped and peed. Ooh, that sounds interesting. At school, Bat had been helping to clean up baby cakes enclosure for a while now, and poop and pee were just part of having an animal. I'll tell you what, little Bat, 
mom said, and her voice was softer now. Thor has to sleep in his enclosure, and I'm going to take care of him during the night. But you can be in charge of his daytime feedings when we are home. And tomorrow after school, instead of staying home with Janie, how about you come by the clinic? I'm going to weigh and measure Thor to make sure he's getting enough to eat, and you can help. Okay, said Bat, for now. But when Thor is bigger, big enough that I couldn't squish him in bed, let's revisit this conversation. That was something Mom said when she wanted Bat to know that they weren't done talking about something. And Bat wanted Mom to know that he wasn't giving up on sleeping with Thor. Mom laughed. You drive a hard bargain, she said, and don't think I'm going to forget about the dishes. So that is it for our two chapters today, 13 and 14. Make sure you do your best work on your questions, writing in complete sentences with capital letters, punctuation, and turning the question around. Thanks for listening.